Hey, good morning. I'm on my way to the Lister's Volvo garage in Worcester, which is actually in Hereford, which is kind of strange. We're going to get the slight bit of damage to the rubber door seal sorted on the car today. Also get the jack and the foam insert and the tire wrench. And I'm not sure if they're gonna have time because I think I've only got like a 10 minute slot, but I am gonna see if they can put the latest uh, software update on because I'm still having cell reception issues as in but it's just basically not working but i thought we'd do a little um ride along video so i could tell you basically i think i've had it now a month but obviously due to lockdown i'm, I'm currently sat at 199 miles so this would be kind of my thoughts after 199 miles with the, the polestar 2. let's uh jump in and get going Oh look, <laughs> 4 Jesus started working. That's pretty awesome. Right, so let's see what's going on on the maps. He saved, I haven't saved anything. Cool, so we're gonna go to Lister's Volvo Worcester, that's the one. And it should take us about 40 minutes and we'll get there with 64%. So let's get the camera mounted and away we go. We'll also look at um, the efficiency as well. So I'll, I'll reset the, the trip meter and we'll see what that looks like when we get there as well. Okay. So apologies for this camera angle. Um, in true vlogging fashion, I couldn't get the mount to stick to the, uh, the front windscreen and uh, I'm worried I'm gonna be running late if I'm not careful. So we're making a move. So the only little thing that's changed obviously since the video just started is I've put the, the heating on because it's cold. So we have the, <laughs> the air conditioning set to auto. I have the heated seat on one and the steering wheel on one. And we're starting off at 80% battery and Google Maps says that we should get there with 63% battery remaining. So that's that's what we're gonna, gonna look at and also test the efficiency. It's uh, five degrees here in the UK and it's 24 miles, which is gonna take us around 41 minutes. So I will include some some footage of kind of what I'm seeing on the road from the dash cam. But again, apologies to put up with this uh, side angled view, which I don't think is my, my best, my best viewing angle. Right. So for some reason, the maps seem to be updating where I am. Let's just see. Going on with that. Okay, so I think Google Maps has now decided to wake up, which is good. So I am going to pull over now that the car's warmed up a little bit and see if I can adjust this camera angle because I don't think it's going to work. The, the light from the, uh, the side here, it's just going to keep on messing with the lighting so there's a little lay-by up here I'll pull over and uh, try again okay welcome back I think the lighting well the Sun's a bit more now so the camera should be working so apologies for the appalling start so change the camera angle it's a little bit lighter so I think things will work a little bit better so yeah a little update for the journey so we've been stuck in traffic a little bit it's now said that we should arrive with 62 percent battery it's currently saying 72 percent but i have 72 percent battery down from 80 where we started the navigation seems to be working pretty well uh, spotify isn't working for some reason so i have been just listening to dab radio but yes 
So now I'm at 208 miles, and what do I think of the Polestar 2? Is it kind of meeting my expectations? And the answer is yes. I'm actually really happy with the car. I sound a little bit hesitant only because of the fact that really you haven't you know, had much time to drive it. I don't do loads of miles anyway, but you know I'm used to doing a school run and all that every morning. Obviously that's not been having to to happen right now. So you know, the actual driving experiences of the car have been relatively low. But when I am driving it, um, you know, it is really smooth. Let's just see if I can mute that. Um, yeah, the driving is really smooth. It handles really well. The only thing that I'm still, if I'm honest, not a massive fan is just how progressive the accelerator pedal is when pulling away. It, it's, I feel, for me, sometimes I feel safe with the pull away. I have to kind of accelerate quite harshly, so put my foot down quite a bit to get to pull away because it is a very dull accelerator uh, from the get-go, I find. But apparently that's part of the dynamics of the, the car. And again, apparently there's some rumor that uh, this next update, the December update basically for the car does tweak that a little bit. So it'd be interesting if I do get that if that changes how I feel uh, about the throttle response. But again, when you mash it, it goes fast. This is a, a fast car, definitely very well built. I've come from a Tesla Model S, and again, that was a great car, but this does feel sturdier uh, and better built. It obviously is a smaller car, also feels a bit more enclosed you know, with this massive center console that we have here. And I have to admit, the first couple of times getting in it, it did feel a little bit cramped but then you kind of adjust over time I have no issues with my knee banging on the center console or anything like that I do think some of the, the center console design is a bit strange so the way that the screen kind of falls down into the center console means it's a little bit odd you have to kind of reach up and in to be able to adjust things like uh, the heated seats and the heated steering wheel. Obviously, if yes, of course, you can use voice control and stuff like that. But sometimes you just want to use your finger. And that's why you, know, you have the buttons there. But um, yeah, apart from that, I'm, I'm really liking everything else. The um, the speed limit signs and stuff doesn't work that great. It, it can never make its mind up whether what, what speed limit zone you're in like right now I'm in a 60 but it says 40 down there so I don't know what sign it last read I mean I just saw one there national speed limit sign it still says 40 so yeah that that doesn't work so well and now it's flashing at me because I'm doing 43 in a 60 but hey ho um but yeah the, I have another video on the lights. The lights are absolutely fantastic. Auto wipers work really well as well. Um, I think there's good steering kind of feel. And I actually find on the performance pack, I haven't messed with this, this the uh, suspension settings at all, but whatever it's currently configured at um, works fine for me. It's, it's definitely firm, but to me, I've always had firm cars, and it's just like the suspension on a Audi S line, as an example. Aesthetically, I like the look of the car a lot. I do wish it was a little bit lower. Uh, for me, there's quite a bit of room in the wheel arches. Yes, you could adjust that by changing the springs and things. I don't think I'm ever going to do it. but. Yeah, that's the only thing that really um, I'm not a massive fan of aesthetically. The rest of it, I think, it looks really smart. I think it's a good-looking car. Uh, again, a couple of times I have been out in it. A few people have commented on the car. I was at a Polestar. People seem interested and excited in seeing something a little bit unusual. Um, but yeah, so far, I'm loving everything about it. 
obviously one of the things that's mentioned quite a lot is the range and the efficiency again i don't do massive miles and again i haven't done many miles to really make a claim on how good the efficiency is i'm going to have another video on just general efficiencies of electric vehicles and stuff and people making that transition from an ice car to an ev because i think people need to think about things a little bit differently but i'm not I'm not that worried about the range. I know it's going to be less than the manufacturer stated because I think every vehicle is pretty much less than the manufacturer states. So yeah, I'm not not too worried about that. The the one pedal driving, the whole time since I've had this car, I've not taken it out of the one pedal driving mode. So I'm always in that mode. And I think it works actually really well. The only kind of comparison I have is my wife has a Nissan Leaf, which has a one pedal driving on there. She doesn't like that. So most of the time when I drive it, I don't tend to mess around with the controls too much. But um, I think this the one pedal driving is better than the e-pedal on the Nissan Leaf in this. I leave it in creep mode just because that's what I prefer. I like it to pull away a little bit when I take my foot off the brake. But uh, yeah, I like it. There's not really anything so far, again, apart from the odd stuff that's not really important I've mentioned. Uh, I will be doing a, a things I like most and the things I don't like video a bit um, later, but yeah, it's good. The seats are comfortable. It would be nicer if you could adjust the headrest a little bit more forwards and backwards as opposed to just up and down. So I find you just have to adjust the seat to a slightly better position. It did take me a, a few goes to adjust the seat positioning and the steering wheel so things felt comfortable. But again, you have lots of adjustment in the seat and the steering wheel, so it's not that difficult to find a nice, comfortable driving position. I love the uh, windscreen wipers on this car. Uh, as, I, as I use them there. I love the fact that the, the washer jets are in the wiper so you do get a nice clean swipe uh, and it's a good location. So yeah I feel like this is just a weird video of me rambling on really and I'm not sure how uh, useful or beneficial it is because it's not well thought out. Um, thought process and I'm still just getting used to the car myself. This is the first real drive. It's a longer drive, and how crazy is it to say that? I love these seat belts, by the way. I love how it contrasts with the, the rest of the car. So it's charcoal interior, it's a nice dark interior, which I prefer. But I think the seat belts contrast really nicely. As a driver, I think you do notice obviously you have panoramic roof but I mean well I think you appreciate the lightness of it but it's really the passengers in the back that really get to see kind of up there and, and now to notice kind of how much it, it shows I, I do realize at the corner of my eye every now and then the Polestar logo does distract me a little bit um, not distract might not be the right word I just suddenly think oh what's that up there oh yeah I remember it's the, the logo so probably will just get more used to that over time as driving experiences kind of continue yeah it's good talking about rear passengers actually that's one thing that is better than I thought it would be is how much room there is in the back so I'm not hung up on the fact that there is uh, some raised area in the back, so obviously it's not most comfortable for someone in the in the centre. If you've got three kids, the Polestar probably isn't the car that you're going to buy anyway. Um, but for me, two kids in the back, they've got plenty of room. And actually, when you look back there, that's what I'm often surprised by how much room they have got on just a couple of times um, that we've been out together. So there's a speed camera here. And it does say that the nav and google would know where the speed cameras are but they haven't mentioned it which is which is interesting um 
yeah so lots of room in the back and there's a good amount of room in the boot as well i haven't really put anything properly substantial in there yet and i still have all my stuff that i took up my old car actually in the garage i haven't compartmentalized things into the bags and and everything it seems like there's a good amount of room in the boot so no objections there and the regen actually is nice on this car as well um, not overly aggressive but not too soft either um, so I like that and I don't know how well it comes across on the micro whether the car sounds noisy or, or quiet but it is a relatively quiet car the sound deadening is good on the Polestar 2 definitely comfortable so yeah I have no regrets touch wood I'm buying this car I know it's gonna have some issues the 4g stuff that wasn't working for a, almost a week again last week again every when I popped into the car and stuff which is now magically working again yes those things are frustrating and yes it's somewhat ironic that Polestar as part of their branding keep on going on about you know the first car with Google, Android Automotive and all that sort of stuff and when the 4G is not working obviously that doesn't really matter because all those online stuff isn't going to work but that's actually one thing that is good about this car is when you haven't got internet connectivity a lot of things on the car still work so that's one thing that used to annoy the hell out of me with my Tesla when the internet connectivity wasn't working which again would be quite often nothing worked you couldn't do voice control you couldn't do, use any uh, of the functionality properly but in this car you can so if you haven't got internet access it's fine you can still use onboard voice control and you can start navigation because you can you can download it maps but it's still do some navigation you can make phone calls you can ask it to turn on the heated seats and that sort of stuff it's not having to phone home to the mothership to interpret what your request is and then do something with it so that's something that i really like about the polestar 2 that yes it's annoying when you don't have internet connectivity because that is a big part of the car but it doesn't matter when you don't have it it's it still works fine so just a little update on the journey so we currently have 66 percent battery uh, left in the car it says 150 miles range we are about nine minutes from our destination and Google Maps which tends to be quite accurate is saying that we should get there with 62% um, battery left so I, I think that's probably pretty accurate again it's five it's five degrees still so it's been relatively consistent again the car's been sat I haven't done any preconditioning and uh, we'll see what the efficiency was like on the way there the one thing that I will say again it's it's not a fault of the car to something that I am not a massive fan on is I would prefer to see the efficiency in miles per kilowatt but it doesn't have that it's you know kilowatts per hundred miles or where it is so my brain has to think about what that means as opposed to just going oh okay it's 3.5 miles per kilowatt fantastic um and also when you're doing the charging i don't like the fact that it doesn't tell you what charging rate you're getting i mean it does it just tells you you're getting eight miles an hour or whatever i would again i would like to see it, it says seven kilowatts or 150 kilowatts or 50 kilowatts or whatever it is uh, as opposed to to that so these are things that they can update and change with software I don't know if they will I don't know if enough people are going to care about it but um, yeah just little niggly things that aren't an issue just personal preference and I guess I just wish I had the option to choose what I would like because I'm sure some people that's fine and it's maybe if you're new to EVs as well this is your first EV that's what you're gonna see and gonna be used to but yeah, just little things. The car heats up pretty quick. 
as well, especially the heated seats. So they, they get up to temperature super fast and the steering wheel um, and clearing of the windscreen works really well as well. It hasn't got um, any elements in the front windscreen, but again, you put that, the heated screen on, it's heated in, in no time and you're good to go. It's a little frustration, we still don't have the app. I think it's been delayed a little bit as well. I can't remember if um, Polestar ever said it was originally spring. I think they said early 2021, but now they said, oh, it's going to be spring. So, you know, sometime between the end of March, end of June or whatever, which is a big time window. Um, I don't really understand why it's taken them so long to do that. You know, when the car was launched or revealed in 2019, you know, they, they talk about all these things and uh, yeah, we obviously haven't got them yet. Which is a little bit annoying. Um, and I guess that's another thing. I don't think it's necessarily a Polestar thing, Android Automotive, there aren't many apps available. I know it's a car, but again, everyone compares things to Tesla. And I didn't, I'm not fussed about fart fart noises and stuff like that but it would be nice that you know if you're parked up at a, a charger where you're going to be there for 30 minutes so you could watch a bit of Netflix or some YouTube or something that'd be quite cool and I understand completely that maybe Polestar doesn't want to foot the bill you know for the data costs fine there's a a slot up there to, to put your own sim in so fine to make it so that you have to use your own data or tethered or something if you want it to work. I don't have a problem with that, but it would be nice for Google to offer more apps uh, for this kind of system that's in the car. All right, so we're at 64% now. Three miles away, still says 62% and I'll have arrived 10 minutes before my appointment, which is pretty good. So yeah, this has been quite a nice, relaxed, kind of first longer drive in the Polestar 2. I do like the, the wing mirrors on this car. The, fr the frameless design is smart. I've had a couple of issues where I've set the car up so when you put it into reverse the the side mirrors will point down so you can see the curbs then it will come back up sometimes the driver's one doesn't always come back up so I put it into reverse and then drive again it sorts itself out so I think just a little glitch the reversing camera is pretty good during the daytime but at night it's not super clear to see Apparently, in the software update, um, Polestar have tweaked the camera settings. So again, that might make reversing at night time with the camera a little bit better. It's weird because from the outside, even though the reversing lights are quite small, it actually looks really bright from the outside. But when you're in here, obviously you've got a tinted rear window, so you don't see very well at the back. Um, and then, also with the camera, it's really hard to see stuff, so it's odd that it's a bit like that. And again, these are things that, again, they're not the end of the world. It just sometimes surprises me that you know, these things aren't picked up in testing. You know, when someone was doing the tests in the Polestar 2, did they never reverse it in the dark and think that's a bit crap? Don't know. But, yeah, if you're looking at getting an electric car, be that your first one, or, or your next one. Definitely consider a Polestar 2, I think. It's a really good car in, in terms of build quality, performance, and the, I think the handling is good as well. And uh, I'm gonna continue to do videos. Maybe that opinion will change. And I'll, I'll let you know. I'm also you know, trying not to be biased. And I'm sure I'll think of more things that I like and dislike as time goes on. But this is just my mutterings and ramblings as we do this journey. Which we will wrap up shortly because we are nearly there. So 1.2 miles away. It's now saying 63% and we're currently on 63%. So 
that's going to be interesting. If I can't imagine the car isn't going to drop its battery percentage anymore. We'll see. Let's see, see how accurate it is. I'm also a little bit worried that this uh, this Worcester Volvo that's actually in Hereford <laughs> isn't at the location that the nav and everything thinks. So we shall we shall see. But it should be just up here. And uh, yeah, then we shall see what the efficiency was like, and have we indeed got there? I guess while I was talking about efficiency, people moan a lot about you know the car says I have 200 range and I only did we have a many it definitely wasn't 200. In a quarter of a mile, your destination will be on the left. In most cars, that range makes no sense. In my Tesla, it wasn't that accurate. It's a guessometer, basically. So just think about how, you know, make your own observations about how much range you get per percentage in the winter and in the summer and stuff like that. Look, the Volvo garage is here. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would just take that with a pinch of salt. I'm not quite sure where we go to get in here. Just here, I think. Your destination is on the left. Thank you. It is indeed on the left. So yep, yeah, here we are at Volvo Worcester with the Polestar, so put it in park and yeah we got here with 63% so the efficiency is we got 45.9 watt hours per 100 miles so not great but it is cold and it was a relatively short distance but uh, yeah hope it helped hope it was semi-interesting I'm sorry that the camera angle wasn't great and it was a bit dark and gloomy and whatnot but yeah just my mumblings I'm just back from the garage I didn't record the journey back because uh, I was there a little bit longer than expected they couldn't do the rear door seal because apparently Polestar had provided the wrong one so I have to go back again but they did sort out a little bit of a sticking issue I had on the parcel shelf so that's now closing nice and smoothly and something I'm going to cover in a separate video is they did do the latest software update so on the way back I only used 10% battery and I got 36.7 kilowatt hours per 100 miles um, and I think it's about 46.9 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 miles when I got there so it seems good and uh, yeah I'll cover that in another video but uh, Thanks as always for watching. Please like, subscribe, press the bell, all the other things. Um, and let me know if there's any questions you have about the Pulsar 2. I can cover those in future videos perhaps. Thanks again.